One of the most exciting breakthroughs within the scientific and medical communities recently has been based on one of the least exciting yet rather dangerous diseases, diabetes, or more to the point, pre-diabetes. Pre-diabetes, aka reversible diabetes, is fascinating and makes way for what I deem to be the breakthrough that our well-being has been waiting for, for what Randox have been honing in on for over 30 years now. So the experts, they agreed, pre-diabetes is the official name of the impairment in your body before diabetes. They agreed it doesn't really show symptoms. In fact, 90% of people don't know they have it. They agreed damage starts during pre-diabetes, especially to your heart, blood vessels, and kidneys, but it doesn't have to. They agreed it is reversible. So we can reverse pre-diabetes and prevent diabetes. How's that? Well, we know people in pre-diabetes don't process sugar, namely glucose, properly. Therefore, when we eat, glucose doesn't provide energy to cells for muscles and tissues to work like it's supposed to but instead builds up in the blood. We know that moving glucose out of your bloodstream and into your body's cells requires a hormone called insulin, which comes from the pancreas, a gland behind your stomach. So your pancreas sends insulin to your blood when you eat, and insulin allows sugar to enter your cells, therefore lowering the amount of sugar in your blood. Measuring your blood sugar or glucose levels is an obvious test for diabetes, and it's called HbA1c. We can also measure insulin and glucose, of course. So easy to test these all with just a finger prick of blood for an easy answer. A yes, you have diabetes, or a no, you don't have diabetes. But now pre-diabetes. Well, pre-diabetes is much more interesting and much more beneficial to test for. Personally, I'd much rather have a small sample of blood taken from a vein in my arm and be told in detail, no, you don't have diabetes, but you have levels of multiple hormones and signaling inflammatory markers that are displaying phase two of pre-diabetes. So let's just resolve it and prevent you from ever getting sick from this. Sound good? Why, thank you. I'd say, how intelligent. I'd feel reassured, impressed. I think I can actually see this science working actively for my personal gain and future well-being and altogether lifelong happiness. Well, maybe that's just me, but let's see if you agree. In pre-diabetes, the immune system releases inflammatory mediators known as cytokines, which disrupt how insulin works. Chronic inflammation in the body causes insulin resistance. Inflammation causes damage from free radicals and oxidative stress in the body, usually caused by high levels of stress, eating inflammatory foods and fatty acids, not enough sleep, ongoing infections, and lack of exercise. And another unexpected factor which we'll look at in a moment. Stress hormones, such as cortisol, are released to prepare the body for a fight or flight response, increasing the demand on the body for energy. For example, in order for the muscle cells to get this energy, the hormone insulin has to be able to transfer glucose to the muscle cells. In the same way, chronic stress causes glucose to build up in the blood, believing the body will need glucose to fuel the muscle cells to run away or get physical in the body's fight or flight stress response, forcing the body to produce excessive amounts of insulin in return. As the cells become more resistant to the high levels of insulin, the pancreas tires and stops regulating high blood sugar levels. Consistently elevated blood sugar levels causes the development of prediabetes, and then that causes diabetes type 2. Bodies in perfect balance will slow insulin secretion from the pancreas as the blood glucose levels start to lower, but not when you have prediabetes. This is when your body is actually becoming resistant to insulin, usually because there's too much insulin secreted to deal with too much glucose in your bloodstream, and your body becomes less sensitive to it. Kind of like violence on TV, we get used to the buildup and are less impacted by it, desensitizing as it intensifies, which isn't actually healthy for us, especially over time. Without insulin functioning correctly, cells aren't getting glucose, their primary source of energy, and many health implications can follow from all of the glucose and insulin in the bloodstream. Eating high inflammatory foods, and simply foods high in glucose, sugar, carbs, uh, also known as the addictive foods that the big companies pump out, well, it fuels your path of prediabetes. And it's actually more like a bridge. 
between Healthtopia and the island of definite diabetes. But if you reach that destination, the bridge burns and you are stuck there. Hence, reversible and irreversible diabetes. Exercise actually allows muscle groups to absorb glucose from the blood without the help of insulin. So even short bursts of exercise increases an individual's glucose uptake for up to 48 hours whilst bypassing the normal insulin signaling levels. So that's scientific proof for you in case anybody needed it to exercise. Before we tell you the solution and simple way to prevent these diseases without medical intervention, let's look at why medical intervention is really better the devil you know for this group of health problems. The unexpected factor I promised you earlier. All medications have side effects, but for many, the side effects of their medications is high blood sugar caused by the drugs, disrupting healthy potassium levels in the body, which actually prevents transfer of glucose from blood to cell. Beta blockers are a type of medication commonly prescribed to treat hypertension, angina, and heart disease. Beta blockers work by interfering with the release of insulin from the pancreas, even when the blood sugar levels are elevated. It's also no secret that heart disease is close mate of diabetes in the body. And also not hard to uncover that the top 10 drug companies are projected to make 21 billion US dollars revenue per year in anti-diabetic pharmaceuticals for people with the disease. And this just feeds more medical industries because whilst the most serious consequence of pre-diabetes is progression to type two diabetes, the most serious consequence of diabetes are rather unfathomable. High blood pressure, which we've just seen medications for, can actually cause diabetes. High cholesterol, heart disease, silent heart attacks, stroke, kidney damage, nerve damage, vision problems, amputations. I must say, I can't take it. No to these sickening drugs, quite literally, no more drugs are needed right now for diabetes because we can prevent it and they're potentially causing worse problems than they're treating these drugs plus comorbidities in in the body in fact no let's go one step further again let's say just re prevent the diseases avoid degradation of health throughout the body and all of its interconnected systems and vital organs can be protected Pre-medical means no medical intervention is needed. Pre-disease means before medical concern, therefore not yet of clinical significance, which is before conditions cement, before diseases develop in your body, before symptoms physically present. Pre-diagnosis means there's no disease to diagnose. With standard blood tests and measurements, this is true. With Randox Health, excitingly, we can now finally diagnose the pre-state. With more advanced blood measurements, this is now science fact. The solution you've been waiting for, or pre-solution, if you will. Many biochemistries present in your blood on a daily basis that hold the answer to the roadmap of your success to be disease-free and drug-free. Pre-medical, non-medical interventions, before drugs, before their side effects, Diagnostic tests for each disease are specific and set. These are based on measurements of individual biomarkers or small, small panels of tests, which are now, frankly, old-fashioned. These routine biomarkers that they measure actually have additional interlinking biomarkers that have been very well researched and utilized to prove clinical utility, but reserved for high-paying drug trials or fancy institutes previously out of reach. These are actually more sensitive, meaning these increase or decrease prior to the diagnostic biomarkers changing or recognizing any shift. They tell us much more, much earlier, pre-disease when prevention is key. It's like fibers that stretch an elastic and regain their spring before being pulled past the limit and, and snapping irreversibly. It's like Randox measuring all of these tests for you to prevent a whole range of diseases. Randox measure many advanced, more sensitive tests for both pre-diabetes and also pre-endocrine related imbalances, which turn into diseases. Randox measure these bioactive proteins, which are even more specifically called adipocytokines, their hormones, cytokines, and growth factors, namely leptin, tumor necrosis factor alpha, plasminogen activator inhibitor type 1, resistin, and adiponectin. We discussed insulin resistance earlier, and well, 
adiponectin levels are lower and closely related to the degree of insulin resistance, aka hyperinsulinemia, aka prediabetes. This can actually be seen developing in the body by measuring adiponectin levels, which are usually lowering as insulin resistance increases. But these are very intricate balances that Van Dox actually understand. Adiponectin has a very important role of modulating glucose and metabolizing lipids in insulin-sensitive tissues. Adipose tissue is fat tissue, but it is now known to be an important endocrine organ that plays a key role in the integration of endocrine, metabolic, and inflammatory signals for the control of energy homeostasis throughout your body. Interestingly, even in obesity, having more fat tissue, we see lower adiponectin levels. How's that? Low adiponectin levels are associated with obesity, insulin resistance, heart disease, and dyslipidemia, making this novel protein an important new marker to test for metabolic syndrome too. How's that? It's reasonable to figure that in obesity, increased TNF alpha and possibly and in hypertension, which is high blood pressure, and are particularly low in coronary artery disease. Adiponectin lowers are, levels are also lower in men compared with women. How's that? It may actually be androgen induced. So perhaps why women seem to have lower incidence of heart disease generally too. Cardiovascular death has been found to be higher in renal failure where decreased adiponectin levels are measured. We can start calling it hypoadiponectinemia now that we're getting so proficient. Obesity is actually characterized by a general change in the levels of circulating adipokines that abnormally accumulate causing dysfunction of fat tissue. Upset adipokine levels are the actual underlying complications of obesity and for the increased risks of developing all of these comorbidities from type 2 diabetes to cardiovascular and actually also neurodegenerative diseases. Fascinatingly, crosstalk between adipose tissue and the central nervous system causes increased risk of obesity developing brain diseases such as cognitive and mood disorders, namely depression and dementia. Because adipokines are a range of small molecules from hormones, cytokines, growth factors, which have a variety of distinct jobs to do, namely they control our metabolism, regulate our bodies, normal balances for homeostasis, they activate our immunity and our behavior or mood, we should and can measure and understand them personally to prevent diseases developing. And I know who does that. Did someone say Randox Health? Fat cells in obesity are aberrant, unpredictable, and deviant. Therefore, these produce abnormal levels of adipokines, higher pro-inflammatory adipokines like leptin, interleukin-6, and TNF-alpha, lower anti-inflammatory adipokines like adiponectin, which in turn lead to dysregulation in your body and your intelligent, intricate systems. Important homeostatic systems fail to function correctly, resulting in all the comorbidities we've been looking at today. Insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, hypotension, arthrosclerosis, and other cardiovascular diseases, plus neurological disorders such as dementia and depression, basically a chronic state of inflammation, promoting the development of these and some types of cancer. Randox Health measure these adipokines featured today for you in these headlines, and you can look forward to hearing details on all of these in more of my stories to come, like TNF-alpha, IL-6, insulin-like growth factors, like leptin, the appetite-suppressing hormone secreted from the fat tissue, and resistin, the pro-inflammatory protein produced in the fat tissue by macrophages. Plus, Randox Health also measure more and more details to paint your picture in high definition, like non-esterified fatty acids, because obesity elevates levels of fatty acids in the blood, which are known to cause insulin resistance in muscle by stopping insulin-stimulated glucose uptake, and C-peptide, which is released with insulin from the pancreas at the same time and in equal amounts. So C-peptide can test can show how much insulin your body is making. The test tends to be better too, because measuring insulin, um, C-peptide tends to stay in the body longer than insulin. 
Many linking kidney function measurements and hypertension tests, plus many, many heart health biomarkers for all round pre-disease identification, reversal, and prevention. The best part, the final part, preconditions are reversible, aka reversible diabetes, and identifiable at Randox Health. A pre-disease state is variable. It's not yet set in stone. You can impact it before it changes fully. It's like a bridge. You might walk onto it, and when you do, you have the ability to turn around and return to safety. Better yet, so many diseases are reversible. Pre-diabetes has just opened the door for healthcare to revolutionize and extol for reversible diseases because reversing them during onset through early identification using sensitive proteomic biomarkers is a Randox Health specialty. Randox measure extensively, complete data analysis, and they apply advanced science and medical expertise. They've researched, developed, engineered these for almost 40 years, and now they're in action for you at Randox Health. So come and personalize, monitor, action, improve, track, prevent for yourself, for all of your friends, for your families, because there's genetic links for every body. It's a simple blood sample gets taken for hundreds of scientific measurements and the earlier biomarkers for pre-disease, reversible diseases, to establish your health baseline in this detail and plus personalized reporting, tracking, monitoring for you to identify the onset of these irregularities and imbalances and apply some science to the solution because that's what works. We have identified many reversible diseases at Randox Health, pre-diabetes, pre-hemochromatosis, pre-anemia, pre-metabolic syndrome, pre-thyroid disorders, pre-heart disease, pre-liver disease, early stage chronic kidney disease, pre-autoimmune impact, and so many more. Randox have been developing these advanced scientific biomarker tests for almost 40 years, like I said, and they're the experts in the field of proteomic and scientific prevention. Our experts are available to work with you and your results, to action and improve your health performance, ultimately optimizing your health across the board and preventing diseases in your future, just like your body, progressing over time, not overnight. So there's no time to waste. Start today. Sign up to Randox Health and start saving your life. It's much more fun this way when you have all the answers.